Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Uh, couldn't quite leave this shower thing uh, where we left it last time. This should be a pretty quick video though for two reasons. We've made a couple changes that should make this go a lot smoother. First of all, this little coupler. It has mach uh, not machine threads, oh my goodness. It has shower threads, uh, at least the threads required for the plumbing in this part of the world. I modeled the threads based on this adapter that we intended to use originally, but this should work a lot better. Instead of requiring a T and a lot of other fittings, this basically goes right in line. So it'll thread onto one end of the standard pipe plumbing. You thread your other normal outlet on the other side. What goes in the middle? Well, of course, there is a hole. that is a perfect press fit for the temperature sensor. So now we can put that in line, the water stream, and it will not be nearly as much of a mess. This should be perfect. Okay, what's the other part? Well, I noticed that we were having a, some trouble getting enough tension on this pulley. Um, and so what I did is I added this external free floating, like freely rotating assembly, which um, allows this whole geared assembly that's grabbing the knob to spin freely inside this larger frame, which will cause the timing belt to engage with more of the gear. But this should allow for a much greater rotational force to be achievable with a much smaller tension force. So it should be pretty much perfect for what we wanna do. We've got a laptop to set up in the other room, so this should be awesome. Let's switch over to the bathroom. What we're watching is the iTerm very slowly ramp up. So we should see this slowly creeping towards the bottom of the frame as it continues to turn up the temperature very, very slowly. It has probably taken, I don't even know, minutes. And we're not even halfway to hot. I think I might have overcorrected for the instability we saw before. I wanted to slow down the loop, but not quite this much. I'm sorry, I'm not patient enough for this, it's been 11 minutes. It's too much water wasted, I'm gonna try to turn it off. Watch the carnage. Very excellent. It did turn off. Okay, let's try that again. Graham. That is the water start. Okay, now we're making much bigger adjustments.
That is a lovely temperature for a shower, might I add. 37. There we are, maintaining at 37. Oh my goodness, we're there. We're at 37. Oh my goodness. Did we really just overshoot and then nothing? Oh, yes. We found the set point. Perfect temperature shower. <laughs> it's working. It's working. All right, let's introduce the disturbance. I'm gonna just rotate the knob and then I'm gonna tension the belt again. Okay, there's the disturbance. Just slowly and carefully adjusting the temperature. Okay. It overshot. We're one degree under. Honestly, that feels pretty darn close. That's really close to what I would expect. And we're slowly turning it back up. Okay, now we're only half a degree out. Excellent. Back into regulation. Oh, that was fun. Watching a control system respond is very satisfying. Now it'll turn off and I think it might come short. I don't know, we did a disturbance, had a lot of DC offset. I was lazy, I should have done the disturbance somewhere else, not right here. That was really cool. Now there's only one more thing I need to do, the hysteretic controller, and I will be satisfied. Wow, this was pretty awesome. Exciting in only the way that a true nerd can understand. We just talked about something for two minutes and then spent 10 minutes looking at graphs. That said, this data is pretty awesome, so let's talk about what we can see. For a PI controller, we know that when the integrator term or when the integral term is too low, response time tends to be awful, really slow. And we saw that perfectly demonstrated. As the integration term increases, we start to see an improved system response and the ability for the system to correct for disturbances. Now I'm sure we could do some fancy delay compensation, all kinds of fun tricks that would allow us to push the performance of the system to its maximum, but I think that we finally have something good enough to move on. What I mean is, I can take a constant temperature shower. I might need some buy-in from the better half before I can leave this installed permanently, but it's a great proof of concept for when I can install whatever mixing valve I want, rather than strapping something to the outside of the shower. 
At least now I know if I have the ability to interface with some plumbing, I can produce a constant temperature shower. If you like this video and can't wait for more, let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button, and leaving a comment down below. As always, I want to give a special thank you to our channel members on both Patreon and YouTube. I really appreciate the extra step that you've taken to support us directly. Thank you. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.